Are you tired of sandwich shops that ask you too many questions? Hi, what kind of bread do you want? What kind of meat? What kind of lettuce? Which region of California do Which you want Which of our 20 sauces? Yeah. What Which internal one? temperature do you want the roast beef cooked to? Well, now there's a sandwich shop that serves only one kind of sandwich. No more pesky questions about what you want. You just take what we give you. Here's your sandwich. It's peanut butter and spaghetti, and the bread is yogurt. Bye-bye! Available now at participating locations. You are stuck in traffic, yes you are. Okay, maybe you're not physically in a car. But when life's troubles are bumper to bumper, too bizarre. Crawling along, not getting too far. Alone in a crowd, just looking for some empathy. Maybe you could use some traffic therapy. Sorry I'm late. It took me forever to find something to wear. Oh my god, Becky. That shirt. What about my shirt? Um, 2006 called, and it made this dark, ominous sound. What? Yeah, I got a call a few minutes ago. When I answered it, on the other side was some sort of unearthly entity that encompassed all of the year 2006 and its being. What? Yeah, and I said, who's this? And then it said, I'm the year 2006, and through an act of unspeakable evil, I have been imprisoned in the present. I traveled the ether, a tortured wraith, hoping to contact someone who will free me to rest until the last stroke of time eternal. Okay. So I said, tell me, how can I free you? And as if from the depths of the past itself, it answered, Tell Becky I want my shirt back. Oh, ha ha. Becky, I'm serious. 2006 wants its shirt back or it will forever be imprisoned. I get it. You don't like my shirt. Can you just drive? I don't have a problem with your shirt. But for some reason, the year 2006 needs that shirt you're wearing to escape its bonds and finally be at rest. You're such a jerk. Hang on. That's my phone. Hello? Did Becky get my shirt back so my agony may at last be at an end? No, she won't do it! No! Norma, what have you brought today to the Antiques Roadshow? This is a vase. It's been in my family for, oh, three or four generations. I don't know too much about it other than it's pretty, and I've always wondered if it might be a hidden treasure. You are quite right to bring it in. This vase is a remarkable example of turn-of-the-century pottery. Beautiful shape, wonderful glazing, and if we turn it over, you see on the bottom here, the maker's insignia. Oh, yes. That mark is from the Van Briggle Pottery Company. They made beautiful bow art ceramics around the 1900s. Oh, yes? I would say it would fetch top dollar at an auction. Only there seems to be some odd scrapes along this side of the vase. I'm not quite sure, but those almost look like teeth marks. Oh, yes. Those are teeth marks? Oh, yes. Are they your teeth marks? Uh, yes. Norma, did you try to eat this vase? Uh, yes. Why? Well, as I said, I don't know much about this vase other than it was very pretty. I would have felt like such a fool if I'd brought it in and it turned out to be a chocolate vase. And it is not a chocolate vase. Oh, no. Those teeth marks may lower the value. Oh, no. Is that everything for the picnic? And these Pepsis. Can I throw them in your trunk? Sure. Hey, don't actually throw them. You'll shake them up. Oh, come on. What's really going to happen if I shake a soda can? Well, for one thing, I might fall in love with you. Hey, man, I got a question for you. Wait, wait. I want to thank Superhero Man for attending this press conference. 
As mayor of Metro Cityopolis, I speak on behalf of the entire city when I say thank you, superhero man, for saving us from Dr. Bad Guy's death ray. Just doing my job. I believe there are some reporters here with questions about my fight with Dr. Bad Guy. By the way, I don't have a secret identity as a reporter. Oh, yeah, I got one. Uh, yes, you in the front. Superhero Man, when you were preparing to battle Dr. Bad Guy's death ray, possibly the most destructive weapon you've ever faced, I think everyone here wants to know one thing. What's with the underwear? Underwear? Yeah! I mean, your Superhero Man costume's got the cape and the spandex suit, but then it looks like you're wearing a pair of underwear on the outside. Why? Okay, I'm sure Superhero Man has more pressing questions to answer. That's all right, Mayor. I want to clear the air about this. My costume does not look like I'm wearing underwear. This is my underwear. <gasps> that you go around saving the world with your underwear out for everyone to see? This isn't just any underwear. This is sheath underwear. Ooh. To save the world, I need more than superpowers. I need super underwear. Sheath supports without chafing, and the moisture-wicking antimicrobial modal fabric feels as soft as the finest space silk of my home planet of Andorosia. Um, am I still to know what that feels like? It feels very comfortable. In fact, I'm as comfortable in my sheath underwear battling armies of cyber dragons as I am working in the office, which obviously I don't do under the secret alter ego of mild manner reporter Kimberly Satoshi. Well, where could a mild-mannered reporter like me, who is obviously not the secret alter ego of the beloved superhero Ocean Man, get my own pair of sheath underwear? Or a perfectly normal mayor like me, who is obviously not the alter ego of the mysterious crime-fighting vigilante known as Mayor Man. Go to sheathunderwear.com. Use the promo code BEAST to save 25% on your order. When you're wearing sheath, you too can feel as awesome as a superhero who absolutely does not violate any intellectual properties or copyrights. Do you like green eggs and ham? No, I do not want them, Sam I am. Would you like them here or there? No, I would not want them anywhere. Would you like them on a house? Would you like them with a mouse? What? No. Sam I am. I do not want green eggs and ham. Would you, could you on- Sam! I don't want green eggs and ham. Your eggs and ham are green because they are rotten. It smells disgusting and I don't want to eat them. Furthermore, you died 10 years ago during the Madrid job. I gave Julia your cut of the diamonds. Stop tormenting me, specter of protein-rich breakfast foods! Ah! Hi. Would you like to try a free sample? What is it? Applewood jalapeno chicken sausage. $6.99 for a pack of 12. I suppose I might as well try one, seeing as I'm currently right next to your free sample stand. Why not? Here you go. Thank you. Mmm. Mmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Interesting. You say there's jalapeno in these? That's right. Mmm. Mmm. Yes. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> I had no intention of trying one of your free samples before this moment, but how fortuitous that events completely beyond my control have brought me right next to you. It's okay to want things. Say what? I know you've wanted this Applewood jalapeno chicken sausage sample for some time. I saw you circle the frozen foods aisle three times now, each time discreetly checking to see if my Applewood jalapeno chicken sausage sample were ready. Oh no, you're mistaken. I forgot something on my grocery list and, huh, silly me, I had to make another round. I'm a very busy person and I have much more important things to worry about than free samples. Jill, it's okay to want things. How do you, how do you know my name? I know all about you, Jill. 
You tell yourself you're better than those people you see crowding around the free samples tables, waiting for the next tray of hot and juicy applewood jalapeno sausages to come out of this little oven. But deep down inside, you want to be right there with the mob, clawing to get your free sample. Oh no. No, 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 no. That's not me. Jill, when life offers you a free sample, don't act like you don't want it. Take it with great joy. Who... who are you? A messenger. And I say this unto you. Do not be ashamed or frightened, for behold, I bring good news. Applewood jalapeno chicken sausages are $6.99 for a pack of 12. Taste and see that they are juicy and easy to prepare on the stovetop or microwave. All my life, I never felt it was okay to act like I wanted anything. Thank you. My pleasure. And can I have another sample? I'm sorry, Jill. Only one sample per customer. With all we have had. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. I go, what shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Welcome back to Cinema Classics. Films. We watch them with our eyes, but we hear them with our ears. And perhaps no one has been more influential to the development of film sound than the man before me, sound designer and Foley artist, Mr. Hank Foley. Welcome. Thank you. Your father, Jack Foley, invented the art of creating sound effects for films back in the 1920s. But it was you who took his work to the next step and created the sound effects for some of the most iconic movies of Hollywood's golden age. Oh, you're too kind. What do you love about creating sound effects? Sound is so ethereal, yet so evocative. The simplest of sounds can stir the deepest emotions in us. And yet, often, when making sound effects for movies, the best sound comes from something other than what you see on the screen. For instance, the sound of arrows flying in the 1938 Errol Flynn film Robin Hood were made by whipping a riding crop next to the microphone. Or the chilling howl of the hound in the 1939 Basil Rathbone film The Hound of the Baskervilles was created by blowing into a trombone covered in wax paper. These are some of your sound effect creations. No, no, no. These were all my father's. My sound effect work is mostly with slide whistles. Slide whistles? Indeed. Most people don't realize it, but I made the sound effects for many of Hollywood's greatest films with this very slide whistle. Interesting. One wouldn't think a slide whistle would have many applications in film sound effects. That's what sets me apart as a sound effects artist. <gasps> I can make this slide whistle sound like anything. Pay close attention to this clip from the 1959 Charlton Heston film Ben-Hur. It's right as the race begins, when all the chariots are lined up in the great arena, there's almost a silence before Pilot drops his handkerchief to start the race. You used this slide whistle to make the sound of the handkerchief dropping. That I did. It's quite a subtle sound. See if you can hear it. <laughs> Believe it or not, that sound you heard was a slide whistle. Wow. I wouldn't have guessed. It's a very versatile sound effects tool. A few years earlier, I was working on another Charlton Heston film, 1956's The Ten Commandments. In the famous scene where Moses parts the Red Sea, I again used the slide whistle to create the sound of the power of God separating the walls of water as the sea opened up. Let's take a listen. Behold his mighty hand! The wind opens the sea! God opens the sea with the blast of his nostrils. It truly is one of the tricks of cinema magic. I prefer to think of it as an art. 
I think I really achieved the pinnacle of the slide whistle's ability to convey emotional depth in the 1939 Judy Garland film, The Wizard of Oz. When I used the slide whistle to create the sound of Dorothy tapping the ruby red slippers three times to return home. I love how I was able to capture all the longing, the fear, and the hope Dorothy has in the small sound effect. And I never could have done it without the slide whistle. Let's hear that now. Then close your eyes and tap your heels together three times and think to yourself, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's, There's no, no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Hank, I want to thank you again for talking with us today on Cinema Classics and for your years of work creating movie magic. My pleasure. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get going. I'm doing the lightsaber sound effects for the new Star Wars movie. And I'm guessing you'll make the sound of the lightsabers with... My slide whistle, of course. Which way is the exit? Right to your left. Yeah, but look out for that banana peel on the floor! <laughs> Credits. The final thing you hear in an episode. These are the credits of the sketch comedy show Traffic Therapy. A 15-minute mission to explore strange new sketch premises. Written by Alex Robbins and Sam Suxiri. And performed by Justin Anderson, Chelsea Bennett, Emma Dean, Madeline Reeling, Alex Robbins, and Sam Suxiri. For more information, visit trafftherapypodcast.com and follow on Instagram and Twitter. Jim, you're talking into a sandwich again. Hmm, so I am. Excellent observation, Doctor. <laughs>